prior to meeting him, I had convinced myself that I was never going to ever date a man. Didn't want to get married. Don't want to have kids. Leave me the heck alone um, mentality. And that's how I operated. Maybe on some level, I knew I was getting to the very end of my rope. Mm. And then like, it just so happened that he like appeared in my life at a time that I really needed a lifeline. This is Dating Greatly, the podcast where we talk about dating, love, and relationships. If you're a woman who dreams of a healthy relationship, but you're scared of putting yourself out there, this podcast is for you. By the end of each episode, you're going to feel more confident, courageous, and empowered to put yourself out there and start meeting your person today. Welcome to Dating Greatly. Today I chat with Kalika Zarek. Kalika lives in Colorado where she's an ultra runner, a business consultant, and an aspiring author. She shares her story of how she went from having an eating disorder in a toxic relationship to finding herself and the love of her life, Logan. If you ever lost yourself in a relationship, this episode is going to be amazing for you to listen to. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today, Um, Kalika. I'm super happy you're here. Thank you. It's such an honor to be with you, and I'm very excited. Awesome. Thank you. To start, I want to ask you, how and when did you know that your partner, Logan, was your person? To be honest, it was shockingly apparent very early on. We connected on such a deep level one of the very very first times we ever actually talked to each other oh one-on-one um so we were introduced through work um at the time uh we worked at oscar blues brewery in colorado and he worked in the finance department i was moonlighting in the tap room um but we had never had like a true one-on-one deep conversation and for some reason that night when we first did, I felt like my soul had been expanded. Um, mm-hmm. And I felt such a crazy strong connection to him. And the talking that, you know, we did, it just felt so natural and so mm. comfortable. And I felt seen and held and heard. And it did kind of freak me out a little bit because Mm -hmm. of the headspace I was in at that time. Yeah. I think prior to meeting him, I had really kind of retracted. I was kind of in like a hermit state Mm -hmm. where I'd really pulled away from everyone, but my very closest friend, I'd kind of pulled away and retracted from family even, Mm -hmm. um, and was really like practicing a lot of self-isolation outside Mm -hmm. of work. I guess that's where the vulnerability comes in because even in that first conversation, I could feel myself opening back Mm -hmm. up to life. So, (laughs) wow. There was also this like synergy that we had, um, and still do thankfully that, I don't know, I kind of have to believe is maybe like otherworldly or like Mm -hmm. this universal energy that we share that's kind of (laughs) magnetized us to each other. Even thinking back on it now, I have goosebumps all over, but um, everything around us disappeared. The people, the hustle and bustle, the sounds, like it was just me and him, like connecting on this like deep soul level. You know, despite these like super strong feelings, this knowing, this synergy, everyone disappearing, you mentioned like you battled yourself because you didn't want to, or you didn't believe it. So I want to get, I want to get back to the, I want to us to keep this just aside for a moment. Um, Before we go there, I want to ask you, how did you feel before you went to see him? Do you remember that? um, Was there anticipation like before this first, I guess, date? Yeah, to be honest, I uh, had sworn off men for the rest of my life and I was like adamant. Um, So I was in a really like unhealthy, what I would consider toxic relationship for Many years as as I was younger, um, I I left that relationship in, in 2012, mm-hmm. and then I didn't date again for over four years when mm-hmm. I met Logan. Um, and prior to meeting him, 
I had convinced myself that I was never going to ever date a man. Didn't want to get married. Don't want to have kids. Leave me the heck alone um, mentality. And that's how I operated. Like going to meet and hang out with Logan the first time. I didn't think anything of it in the very beginning because Mm -hmm. that wasn't that wasn't even something that had crossed my mind. Like he Mm -hmm. wasn't even an option, I guess (laughs) is how I would describe it. I actually have a really like poignant memory um, of that time because I had told myself like, nope, not going to happen. Like Mm -hmm. he's not your type, like Mm -hmm. all these storylines. Right. And I remember um, calling my mom. I was on a run one day and I always called my mom when I was like outdoors, out enjoying life. And I remember asking or telling her like, oh, there's this guy who has expressed, you know, interest. He's like kind of trying to date me. I'm not sure how I feel about it. He's not really my type. And I will never forget what my mom said um, because it was so like profound. She said, you know, given your past experiences, maybe it's time for you to open up to a different type. (laughs) <laughs> like mm-hmm. mom just like mic drop right um, <laughs> and then she went on to share her story of how she met my dad mm-hmm. and how they had become lifelong companions and her mm-hmm. statement to me was like are you looking for like a thrill or are you looking for a lifelong companion Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll always remember that conversation because it was really a turning point for me to kind of to kind of slow down and be like, wait a minute, maybe like this is something that could be really good for me. Mm -hmm. You know, especially now my mom actually passed away in 2018 Mm -hmm. and just having that having her be kind of woven into our love story, like makes it so much more meaningful for me. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is that he and I both being in the headspace of, I don't want to date anyone Mm -hmm. showed up to those first few dates of like 100% authentic, no holds barred. Mm. We both looked at each other and we're like, do you want kids? And I was like, nope. And he's like, nope. Like that was the first, like one of the first things we talked about. Oh, wow. (laughs) Like a lot of other folks, like, you know, certain things like don't get brought up until later. And then it creates a massive like rift between them. Or it was just kind of like, we put all of our cards on the table Mm -hmm. and we were like, this is who I am. So Mm -hmm. if you don't want to talk anymore, like it's cool, I'll be fine. Um, And reflecting back, that was the first time I'd ever done that Mm -hmm. in the early stages of a relationship. So um, with this authenticity piece and like you were able to just freely say who you were, what you wanted, how was that different? I guess like, cause you mentioned you were in not a not so good relationship for many years. Can you tell me how you were different back then? Like who was Kalika at that time? Mm, love this question. Um, so I started dating my ex old ex, um, when I was young, I was like 18 years old. And I think that I was definitely in a place of like low Mm self-esteem and, um, you know, uncertainty, anxiety, trying to figure out who I was like, and I kind of fell into that relationship. Well, he was a former, um, military person and he Mm was pretty like significantly older than I was. Um, and somehow like our relationship dynamic right out of the gate was like very codependent Mm -hmm. and, I went into it thinking like, oh, he needs me to help him like through because he just had gotten back from Iraq. And Mm. I kind of took on the like, oh, I can be this like savior for him or whatever. Um, And I think in that process, I being young, you know, I really like lost myself. Mm -hmm. I everything I did was like to try and please him or appease him. Um, And I felt like I, like he kind of just took the reins on everything and I allowed him to. Mm -hmm. So it created this like power struggle. So I think just having had that experience, the, the, the power of it is I knew like, well, first I thought I knew I was never going to be with another man ever. Um, but then I, I knew exactly what I would not do again. Like I made it 
I made such a strong point to not relive a lot of those really negative habits and patterns because I saw where they led. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, I can, yeah, totally identify with, with your story. Um, I was in a similar relationship, like totally codependent, same thing. He was, um, well, I don't want to say damaged goods, but he, he had an alcohol problem. He self-harmed. He, I think he was like borderline personality disorder. Like there was a, a lot of things and it made, I made it my mission to like help this person. And, you know, it's, you just, I just went into like this caretaker rescue role, yeah. which I was repeating from childhood in a way with, with just childhood dynamics that kind of made me do the same thing. And yeah, it all became just like you said, all about him making him feel good and then adjusting my personality to him as well. Like what is going to make him mad? What's going to irritate him? I remember I was such a, um, I'd like to say funny person and I, and I am now, and I love making jokes and like, you know, um, maybe sometimes inappropriate jokes. And so I would do that because that's who I am. And I remember he would get so upset. So I stopped doing that. And that by, by stopping that, I was like sub, I guess, suppressing my true nature. And um, that was just the entire relationship, adjusting myself to appease, like you said, to meet his needs. And by the end, it was like, who am I? It was, um, I actually like had no sense of who I was. And then when the relationship ended, it was like somebody had pulled the rug out from underneath me. It was like the great abyss. <laughs> and yeah. um, same with you, what you said, I'm never going to get into this situation again. And, and same thing. I was like, never, ever, ever again. So but sometimes you got to be in that dark place, really hit rock bottom to understand like, are you like who you are, how you want to live your life and kind of where you want to go. Yeah. Wow. That's such a parallel experience. Right. And I'm sure as a relationship coach, you have seen a lot of parallels, but that's like very striking to me how mm -hmm. everything you just described was like spot on to my, for my experience too, where it was mm -hmm. like, you, I felt like I was shrinking away, like yeah. And like my health suffered as well. And I, and um, knowing what your story is, I, I want to ask you about that in a moment. Um, but yeah, like, it's like our bodies in these situations. And like, I always come back to that in relationships as well. When we meet a person, when we're with a person, like how our bodies are responding, what was your body doing? And what were you doing during that time? Ooh, yeah, I, um, I mean, I had some unresolved trauma that I had never dealt with. Um, and I think that kind of did play into how I showed up to that old relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I think I kind of showed up as, as a victim, as less than, like that was what was in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but I think over time, yeah, just losing, losing more and more of myself. Um, I felt like I had no control over anything. And I think mm -hmm. that being kind of a tumultuous time anyways, as a young woman, like yeah. as a young person. Um, so for me, the coping um, mechanism that I kind of fell into was um, an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. So I remember, I remember kind of having a, just an overall like unhappiness with my body. Um, you know, I'd, I'd felt that way for a long time. Um, and I finally hit a breaking point when I was with him in that relationship where I think a big motivator was that I didn't feel like I had control over anything. And I didn't, I felt like I had lost myself completely. Mm -hmm. So the behaviors that I started engaging in kind of filled that, that void for me and kind mm -hmm. of created like an, like a dopamine loop because I would restrict, like, like really restrict my calorie intake. Mm. And then I would feel like a sense of accomplishment or a mm. sense of like, um, oh, I, I'm taking control back. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and that just kind of like perpetuated. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of things kind of played into that. And I, 
you have fortunately overcome um, that struggle and I've been in recovery since honestly, right around the time I met Logan Okay, um, we're on okay. that soon. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I went through a recovery program and, you know, I've done lots of therapy and mm -hmm. I've done worked with a coach and um, I'm proud to say that I no longer engage in those behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, you know, giving myself, um, giving myself some like self-love to just know that like, oh, that was the only way I knew how to cope with what was going on inside of me at yeah. the time. So the time when you left that relationship, when you got out of it in those, um, was it four years you said till you, yes. till you yeah. met Logan? Yeah. So there must have been, because I mean, when you met Logan, you were at this point where you were able to open up, like something had happened already that got you to this point that you were able to, yeah, like attuned to each other. And like, he was empathetic, compassionate, attuned to you. So in some way, you must have been empathetic and compassionate towards yourself to be able to receive that. So I wonder when you left that relationship in those four years, what helped you? Like what helped you heal that and get to the point where you were able to invite your soulmate in? It was great for me to be out of that relationship, because mm -hmm. that was for sure a destructive path, like mm -hmm no other, but then, you know, being out on my own kind of had its own set of challenges. Um, but I think, I guess there's probably two things that got me through it. Like mm -hmm. I was kind of just surviving, like I was surviving when I met Logan. Um, yeah. but it, it was my best friend who was my lifeline. And then I also, um, fell in love with running. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Running actually was a way for me to, um, take my power back. Mm -hmm. It felt like, right. Mm -hmm. Like it was something I was doing for me. It was something that, uh, felt empowering. I honestly don't even know what it was that mm -hmm. made me say yes. Mm -hmm. But I think as soon as I got to know him, I could see a future mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. and I think that was the first time in several years that I saw any future for myself mm -hmm. or had any hope at all. Wow. Maybe on some level, I knew I was getting to the very end of my rope. Mm. And then like, it just so happened that he like appeared in my life at a time that I really needed a lifeline. Hello, lovely lady listening. Chances are that if you listen to this podcast, you're someone who's doing the work to live your best life and have the best relationships of your life. And even though you've never felt better, something is missing. You want to be able to share your life with someone, go on adventures with someone, try a new restaurant with someone, but you're also super nervous about putting yourself out there and attracting the wrong person. So you stay single and you seriously ponder becoming a crazy cat lady. Wholehearted Love is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where we work together to get you open and ready to attract a loving relationship. This program is a heart-centered, transformative journey to love, and it will help you identify and rewrite limiting beliefs that you have so you can learn to trust yourself and others. It will help you get crystal clear about your actual wants and desires so you attract nothing but. And the program will help you manifest your ideal partner and relationship energetically, physically, and spiritually. To find out more and to see if this program is a fit for you, send me a DM on Instagram at lifecoachyvonne or click on the link to my website in the show notes. Thanks for listening and enjoy the rest of the episode. So tell me about the battle that ensued um, <laughs> that you that you had after that initial meeting where all the like you knew, a part of you knew, like your gut knew that this was right, but your mind was fighting it. So tell me about what that was like. Yeah, I think it was fear, definitely mm -hmm. fear, fear of being vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, you know, still like being kind of, I was honestly kind of in a relationship with my eating disorder, which sounds weird, but like, that's kind of how they talk about it in recovery is mm -hmm. like, it kind of swoops in and like takes all of your attention, all of your energy and kind of like leeches onto you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there, that was a part of it is I was like, Oh, I can't be in a relationship because there's not going to be room for me, this thing and a partner. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and I also was like terrified of sharing any of that kind of stuff with right. a partner. Um, but again, Logan being who he is, 
being so strong, grounded, compassionate, and just someone that I immediately trusted. Mm -hmm. Like I, I pretty much instantly opened up to him about everything, Mm -hmm. everything, like things I had never told anyone Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about my eating disorder, which was like so shameful to me at that time. And something that I didn't even talk to like my parents about, Mm -hmm. like he kind of, it feels like he kind of just like came in and like pulled this sheet of shame off of me. It was mm. just like, oh, you don't need that anymore. <laughs> like, and then I was like, just like, oh, I can tell you everything. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you must have felt so safe around him and yeah. trusted him quickly. You know, we had this thing in the first couple of years of our dating. I had this like thing that I would say like, oh, you saved my life. Like mm. without you, I don't think I would have been able to fully recover or like I was always adamant of like you saved my life and he would always be like no like you saved your own life I just Mm. like was here to hold your hand and support you Mm -hmm. and it's crazy because it has started to come full circle where looking back on it now I had to have the ultimate act of self-trust to open up to him Mm -hmm. And that in that moment or in those moments where I was able to expand, to be vulnerable, to trust myself, to know that like, no, these feelings are legit, like trust yourself. It wasn't even a conscious choice, but it's just how it played out. But like, I think that act of self-trust, like reconnected me to me big time. I also remember early on. Cause he showed up so differently than anyone I'd ever met. Like mm. almost this like enlightened being that, <laughs> and of course now like knowing his parents, knowing his mom, like, oh my gosh, like his, just the way he was raised, like everything and who he is as a human being, mm-hmm. it's all part of it. But like, I remember reading the book, um, Attached. I don't know if mm-hmm. you've ever read about Attached. I'm sure you've read it, your relationship coach, but um, yeah, I remember at the time I had met him and I, a friend, my friend recommended that book attached and it was all of a sudden like, oh, okay, I get it. He's secure. He's a secure attached person. Like mm-hmm. he like, and I think being in that dynamic, it like brings you kind of up to that level in some ways mm-hmm. where like you learn how to be securely attached and how to trust. And I, I think too, about like what you know, these amazing things you say about him, like we mirror the partners that we attract, we mirror the person that we're with, like we're always on a similar level. So even if at the time you didn't see that about yourself, that's what he would have seen as well. Like that same, like enlightened being, like he would have seen that because like we mirror each other. So there was some of that in you. Mm. Yeah. I think it's kind of cool to think about like the, like these amazing people, that we attract it's like oh I must be pretty amazing too (laughs) yeah he saw what was underneath all of my shame Mm -hmm. and he saw like who I really was Mm -hmm. and maybe that's part of it too with my healing journey is like having him love me that way no matter Mm -hmm. what has like reflected to me like oh like you are worthy of unconditional love and you can also give that to yourself. Like if someone else can treat you that way, like you can treat yourself that way. Yes. Yeah, totally. You were in that phase of kind of battling yourself. Like you don't want to get into a relationship. What was it eventually that made you kind of surrender to it and be like, okay, let's go. He asked me, would you like to go have sushi with me? Mm. And in a moment of like, kind of that feeling of like losing total control I wrote back like without my brain like Mm -hmm. my heart my heart jumped in and wrote back I'd love to send and then I had this sheer like panic moment where I like (laughs) almost started crying and was like what did I just do I can't go on a real official date like that Mm. for like a split second but Mm -hmm. then it was like no you said what you said without thinking about it because it's the right thing Exactly. Because you are supposed to go on this date. And 
that kind of, from that moment on, I just trusted the process. And I was like, okay, take your head out of this thing. Like follow your heart, Mm. go with it. And so so powerful. Yeah. (laughs) We kind of did the dance for a little while. Um, Again, him being so incredible. Like I was working through a lot of stuff um, about intimacy Mm -hmm. and Mm. that was not a part of our relationship at all. Like we Mm. were we didn't take it to an intimate place in that way until like six months in to officially dating. Um, mm. And he had that much like care, consideration, respect, yeah. like yeah. for me and my process. So again, that just speaks volumes, to, like who he is as a person. And-, and to both of you as well, like for you to even to allow yourself to take that time and not put pressure on yourself and not be like I have to do this so he likes me that's like no I need this I have troubles with this and for him just to be like I got you yeah that's amazing oh I know I'm gonna start crying (laughs) (laughs) yeah such an incredible human oh my gosh I feel just like so fortunate all the time um but yeah you know we we did the dance for a while and then and then his birthday is in early April, and um, we had planned to go to Glenwood Springs together. So we had a plan to go to the mountains, and like it would be our first kind of couple getaway type thing. Mm-hmm. So he ended up not going, but I went. I still went. Girl, my- yes. <laughs> I took myself on that weekend getaway. Um, I love and- that. And um, that coincidentally was the weekend that I put my, it was like, almost like I flipped a switch Mm -hmm. and I put my eating disorder behaviors behind me. And I made a conscious choice to say like the road ends here and I'm never going to do those behaviors again. Wow. We went on a hike um, for his birthday and on that hike, something happened. Like, again, I feel like our souls were like, Maybe they were like reconnecting with each other or I don't know what it was, but I think by the end of that hike, we both just knew again, like, but this time Mm -hmm. beyond the, beyond a shadow of a doubt that like, no, we, we, we have to pursue this. We're both going to be so sad if we don't give it a shot. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. And you saying you went anyway on this trip and then like oh my god that's such an act of self-love and like when you think about a person that's codependent the codependent person like your past self would have stayed at home Mm. and would have been like I don't know just thinking about that person or or whatever just make a focus on someone else but in this moment, like that's such an empowering decision that you made. Like I'm going anywhere because I deserve it. I deserve this getaway. And like, I'm good enough to go with, I'm worthy to go with, even if he cannot join me. And then to make that decision in that time frame to be like, this is the end of my eating disorder. Like, Oh, and then to have that hike afterwards where the soul, like, it was like, that was exactly how it had to happen yeah. for you to like, just show up for yourself in that way and then your souls could like (laughs) I I think you're right like I never actually thought about it in that way but yeah it was this like me taking these little steps to this like massive breakthrough yeah I think I really was even though I had convinced myself I wasn't I was ready to move on with my life and be kind of like reborn. (laughs) Yes. And like your heart and your soul knew that you were ready, you know, way ahead of your mind. It's like your, your mind still, it was like running behind a little bit, like, let me catch up. (laughs) Right. Yeah. But it did. Yeah. That's awesome. So where are you at today? And uh, where are you and Logan at? I am a really proud to say that I've, you know, like I said, back, gosh, that would have been like 2015, maybe. Um, I put those behaviors behind me and I've never, never gone back. Um, you know, I think there's always stuff that we carry with us. There's always going to be hard days and things that we work through. And, um, but fortunately, like I've continued my journey toward healing and, I've met a lot of incredible people on that path. Um, 
and open myself up to doing stuff like this, where I get really vulnerable and share parts of it, which the old me would have never imagined. Um, (laughs) But so I'm doing really well. I'm uh, currently a business consultant and business coach, um, which is a blast. And I am still running, but I've also kind of reformed my relationship to that. And Mm -hmm. it's like a really joyous, healthy thing that I do um, with my spare time. Um, And then Logan and I, oh my gosh, we are closer and more in love than ever. Um, You know, we have maintained just that feeling we had when we first met that we knew, like we knew that we were each other's forever soulmate Mm -hmm. partner. Um, and I will say like the best gift we've given each other is to be fully transparent and authentic and to have like hard conversations when they need to be had and to honor ourselves while honoring each other. Um, Yeah. So we're going super strong. We've built such an amazing life together. Um, Mm. We live together with our dog. We do tons of adventures together. We love to be outdoors. Um, And, you know, we've, we support each other through Mm. thick and thin and everything in between. And I think we both are, we both feel very lucky to have found each other and we both feel very supported in our relationship. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think for anyone listening, like, I don't know, my biggest encouragement is like, if like, trust yourself, right? Like if you get to a point where you have that feeling of like, is this it? Like, just trust yourself. Like I, cause I can't imagine how different my life would be if I would have shut that off and ran like, which was my original inclination. So. Yes. Yeah. It just makes me think of this quote about um, in order to love someone else, you have to love yourself first. Or this, this thing about, you know, having that self, you got to work on yourself before you get into relationship. Um, mm-hmm. what, what do you say about that? Because to me, it sounds like you kind of put this on its head and kind of yep. did, did your own thing. So what do you say to that? Yeah. I mean, I understand the the principle behind that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you, you can't love someone else fully unless you love yourself. But I did not have that experience. Um, for me, it was the opposite because I allowed someone else to love me, which really helped me see that I was worthy of being loved. And like I said before, it helped me it helped me like it almost modeled like, oh, this is how you should treat yourself in a way. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I say that like there's no right or wrong order for Mm -hmm. any of it. And I think especially my encouragement to other women is like, I think a lot of times we, we can kind of the, the connection to our intuition, we can kind of like sever it somehow. Right. Or like Mm -hmm. we get um, bogged down by a lot of other messages or, um, distracted by things, but it's Mm -hmm. like on a core level, like, you know, what is for you, you know, that's right. Sometimes you have to slow down. Sometimes you have to strip things away, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, deep down and like, listen to that and tap into that and find some, like, maybe it's a coach or maybe it's a, therapist but like find someone who can help reconnect you to that too because Mm -hmm. that was the turning point for me like that Mm -hmm. like I said that shift of like I don't know what's going on and I'm just gonna go with it was the best thing I've ever done (laughs) and then also whatever connection we can have to our body like for you you started running for me I started doing yoga I think any any thing that brings us closer to the sensations in our body will help us better listen to our intuition. Yeah. The more I can slow myself down and tune in the better, like everything in life is I'm more present. I can make better decisions. I can Mm -hmm. listen. I can know when my intuition is trying to get my attention that, and I actually have one more if I can. (laughs) Yeah. I was just going to ask you, is there anything that I haven't asked you yet that you really like, I need to say this. Yeah, this just came on really strong. Um, This goes alongside, you know, 
cultivating self-trust and maybe this is part of the like love yourself first mentality where it's like mm-hmm. value yourself enough to raise your flipping standards because mm-hmm. for so long I was like had the lowest standards for what was acceptable treatment of me have the highest standards for yourself because I promise that like there is someone out there who has it all, who is brilliant, grounded, supportive, strong, kind, courageous, empathetic, like attuned is, you know, handsome and fun and charismatic and just everything you've ever wanted. Like, so do like, do not settle for Mm -hmm. anything less. And I know that sounds like a cliche, but like, man, I cannot imagine if I would have settled and like started dating some bar fly before me (laughs) how horrible yeah like keep your standards high wait as long as it takes it will be worth it um yes yeah when you find your own logan you'll just be the happiest person in the world yeah so ladies to find your own logan raise your raise your standards yeah yeah and like you can even for me like in the last you know even six months i've raised my standards because i'm like I, I want a high value man. I'm a high value woman. I need to start acting and being and feeling like one. So, you know, it's like wearing clothes that make me feel like a high value woman. It's like washing my hair more, like wearing it down more to feel like a high value woman. It's painting my nails. It's like, like I do a lot of things that just make me feel better. You know, like, like you said, um, go on that vacation by yourself, like do things for yourself that you would want someone to do for you as well. Like just treat yourself like a gosh darn goddess. Yes. Heck yeah. <laughs> there's, I think there's power in that. Cause I think it's also magnetizing in a way, right? Like totally is. Yes. And also the, you know, the support system you have around you, that's also raise your standards. Cause like what you, what you said, when you met him, you had your sister and your best friend. So you had that, you know, high value people in your life. So it's like, look at your life and your circle of friends. Are those high value people? Because that's all also going to be a reflection of who you're going to attract. So that's something I had to do as well is like reevaluate what was working for me and what wasn't like, where was their negativity coming in or, or just that heavy energy that I didn't want in my life anymore. And then it was about filtering that out. And sometimes that's hard. Um, but also I feel just awesome where I'm at now. So yeah raise your standards and continue to keep your standards high. Yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely. And Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you too. I feel like you have this radiant um, energy that you're exuding. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Thank you. And um, so um, Kalika, final question, what song or music piece are you dancing to nowadays? Ooh, good question. Gosh. Um, okay, so there's this artist Max M A X that I've been really vibing to. He's kind of poppy. Okay. But there's definitely some songs that I I like to dance to. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Do you have one in specific or Color Vision? Color Vision? Ooh, I love yep. it. Color Vision. C O L O U R Vision by Max. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yay. Perfect. I can't wait to I need to hear this playlist of yours. I'm yes. Excited. <laughs> I'll share it in the show notes so you'll get it. How, um, if someone that is listening resonated with your story, and I'm sure there are many women that are going to be resonating with with what you shared with us today, um, how can they best get in touch with you? Yeah, I would love to connect with anyone. Um, I mean, like I said, I've been so lucky to have the support I've had in my life, but I know that not everyone is that lucky. So if I could ever pay it forward and be supportive of someone else. I would be honored. Um, So anyone can reach out to me, probably Instagram messenger would be the easiest. Mm -hmm. Um, My handle is just Kalika Jen Zarek. Um, That or I'm on Facebook, same thing, Kalika Jen Zarek. So. Okay. And I will spell that out in the show notes. So the link will be there for everybody. Awesome. Well, it was such a treat chatting with you today. I feel like there's a lot more that we could go into and like explore, but this was, um, yeah, just lovely. And thank you so much for sharing your story and being vulnerable and open with us. And yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you and so happy to hear how things 
have evolved for you and where they're at for you. So thank you. Thank you so much. It was so amazing getting to know you a little bit better. And yeah, I, uh, I look forward to listening to your show. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thanks.